Welcome to Brilliantly British. My name is Lawrence and today I'm going to share with you another Brilliantly British creation in the form of this chocolate and beetroot pudding with an enriched chocolate custard. So please, please, please sit back, relax with a cup of tea in hand, putting those feet of yours up to and enjoy this episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Given that a fair few traditional sweet puddings have appeared on the channel, we thought it was high time to release another brilliantly British original that experiments with flavor combinations and textures. This, my dear viewers, is a beetroot and chocolate pudding served with a rich condensed milk chocolate sauce. Step by step, we'll talk you through this pudding's preparation before a session of tasting at the end to deliver our verdict. So now, with the introductions made and your interest peaking, please allow me to introduce the ingredients to you. For today's Brilliantly British Beetroot and Chocolate Pudding, you will need some beetroot, some plain white flour, some baking powder, some condensed milk, some suet, some cornstarch, some good quality cocoa powder, some dark chocolate chips, a whole orange, some granulated sugar, some butter, and an egg followed by a little pinch or two of salt. And that, my friends, is all you will need for today's Brilliantly British Beetroot and Chocolate Pudding. But before you get started, before you do anything at all, please switch on your kettle, brew yourself a nice cup of hot tea so that you can sip on that whilst you cook. To begin preparing our beetroot and chocolate pudding, following a sip of tea by hand or with a food processor, combine your dry ingredients, namely flour, sugar, salt, cocoa powder, suet, orange zest, and baking powder to form an aromatic dry pudding mix. Then with the mixture set aside, advisedly with gloves, peel your raw beetroot, then slice and then finely dice, thereafter incorporating into your dry pudding mixture before setting aside once more. Proceed by then homogenizing eggs with condensed milk, which should be combined with the dry mixture to form your chocolate pudding batter. Off camera I greased and floured my pudding bowl into which my batter was ladled and then following some light taps on my counter to release any pockets of air my bowl was then topped with a greased and double pleat folded sheet of grease proof paper which should not only contain the pudding but also allow it to rise as it steams. Following on with paper in place atop went a sheet of foil which was contoured around the bowl before string was drawn out, knotted at an end before being formed into a lasso to securely fasten the paper and foil sheets, which, should you feel up to it, could also be used to string together a handle, if you'll excuse the pun. To cook the pudding in a sufficiently deep pot, bring water up to a gentle rolling boil at which point a pastry ring or a thick ring of scrunched up foil should be submerged, enabling the pudding to sit securely within the water with the water line being around the bowl's midriff. As the pudding steams under a lid, ensure that the water level is maintained and crucially never boils dry. But moments later, with the pudding cooked, carefully remove and allow to rest, leaving you with time to prepare the rich chocolate sauce. For the sauce, gently warm condensed milk with a sprinkle of salt and then with some egg yolks will go a helping of corn flour and cocoa powder which should be thoroughly combined. Then with the milk just beginning to steam, gradually temper the chocolate base before returning to your pot to cook and thicken whilst whisking constantly over a medium heat. Once ready, the sauce should steam subtly while holding a line if split, at which point your source of heat should be immediately turned off before enriching the sauce with a knob of butter 
and a welcomed season of sugar to taste. Perfect. The now rested pudding should be unwrapped with a wary eye open for hot steam, but once uncovered, the pudding should be gently persuaded with a spatula or knife before turning over onto a plate and allowing to fall slowly. So now with a steaming hot beetroot and chocolate pudding, and with your curiosity peaking, I think it's high time for... Tasting, tasting, tasting. Are you ready? Are you steady? Three, two, one. This is, this is incredible. Um, I've never been a fan of baked chocolate cakes because for me, they've always come out as dry. This of course isn't a cake, it's a chocolate pudding that's been steamed and anything with chocolate in it, I've noticed needs a lot of moisture. And this is full of it. It's spongy, it's rich, it's textured as well because the beetroot has got a very subtle bite that's still left in it. And coming on to the topic of the beetroot, it's earthy, which goes wonderfully with the chocolate. And with it being a vegetable, doesn't take away from the fact that it's somehow managed to be fruity and add a fruity element to this pudding. And then there's the chocolate sauce, which I struggle to comprehend that it's able to somehow add to this already amazing pudding, but it just does. It... This is my favorite chocolate pudding, period. And it's yours. So, with that being said, with that being said, please go out, get the ingredients, and make this chocolate and beetroot pudding with the complimentary custard, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for allowing me to show you how to make a chocolate and beetroot pudding with a fantastic chocolate custard. Knowing that you loved this episode, don't forget to click on the like button, the subscribe button and the notification button so that you don't miss any of our new releases. Tell everyone, and I mean everyone, about the Brilliantly British Food on this channel and follow us on all of the social media platforms that this channel is on and I will see you